Bitte. Hello everyone and welcome to day one of the BFI Future Film Festival 2022. My name is Harry, I'm the Festival Digital Events Producer and today's session is take your first steps into the film industry with the BFI Film Academy. In this online session we'll be discussing how you can begin your career in the screen industries and what trainee or mentoring opportunities are out there available to you in your local area. You will hear from the BFI Film Academy team about current and future opportunities we are running for filmmakers aged 16 to 25. And you will also hear from some of our Film Academy alumni, currently working in the industry and able to give you direct feedback about what those first few years has been like for them. At the end of today's panel discussion, we will be putting information on screen and into the chat about breakout sessions in local areas all around the UK. So at that time, we'll be encouraging you to join those breakout sessions and ask many burning questions about what kind of opportunities are local to you that you can get involved with. Um, before we start, I want to let you know how today's session will work. Behind the scenes, my BFI colleagues are here in the chat and here recording the session, making sure that we can answer any of your questions about the festival, the Film Academy, or any other events that the BFI is currently running. However, if you have a question for the panel or for the host today, we are encouraging you to put that into the Q&A section. This will allow us to collate all the questions and we will cover as many of them as we can in a Q&A session at the end of the discussion. Um, we do have a Facebook networking group if you'd like to join that and meet other filmmakers in your area that you could potentially collaborate with on projects. And please, at the end of the session, we will send you a survey and that is by far the best way to communicate with us about future things you would like to see in the festival. Um, the session today has been recorded, it will be uploaded to the BFI YouTube channel very soon and the best way to find out when that is scheduled is to follow us on social media, either on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook or a variety of other platforms. Today's panel will be hosted by Billy Collins, she is a Film Academy alumni herself and a writer for stage, screen and audio. She's currently writing with Boxer Tricks Theatre, Thick Skin Theatre and Toasty Animation and is herself a previous BFI Film Academy young programmer having curated and hosted events for the BFI Future Film Festival, London Film Festival and BFI Flair Film Festival. Um, without much further ado, I'd like to hand over to Billy and thank you so much for being here today. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Billy and I'm your host today and welcome to this event all about taking your first steps into the film industry with the BFI Film Academy. So as Harry said, this is a session of two halves. In the first half, we'll chat to our fantastic panel who you're going to meet shortly. And in the second, you'll get to join our partners across the UK and find out about some opportunities local to you. So throughout the session, we'll hear more about what the Film Academy is and does. We'll learn about the courses, events and opportunities on offer. And we'll speak to some Film Academy alumni about their experiences. As Harry said, if you have any questions for any of our panelists at any time, please just whack them in the chat. And if we can, we'll get around to them at the end. Uh, but just like being at the movies, we are going to start with the trailers. So here is a short film giving you the full scoop on the Film Academy. I'm going to ask my glamorous assistant, Harry, to roll the VT. This opportunity has just been absolutely amazing. I'm loving this experience. I just enjoy every moment of it. Quiet on set. Rolling! Action! The BFI Film Academy is for 16 to 25 year olds across the UK who are interested in a career in the screen industries. The BFI Film Academy offers everything from practical hands-on courses to traineeships and mentorships and finally events and festivals. We run 50 short courses across the UK where young people can learn about the different roles in the industry and how to make a short film. We also run specialist courses where young people can really focus on a specific area, such as documentary, craft skills, animation, art department, film festivals and audience development. Our labs and scene events are available UK-wide, online and in person. Labs are monthly masterclasses, panel discussions and workshops led by industry professionals. Seen are our weekly Instagram Live events hosted by the BFI Film Academy Young Programmers. There are interviews with young filmmakers, giving them a chance to promote their films and giving you a chance to learn from your filmmaking peers. Because of the Young Programmer Scheme, I've really learned what I want to do with my career and I've made the contacts and picked up the skills that I need to to do that. We run the Future Film Festival, which is the UK's largest film festival for young people. We have masterclasses, panel discussions, workshops and screenings. Making a film in general is a cool thing, but being able to show it here at BFI South Bank is just incredible. 
incredible. We offer mentoring schemes and an incredible opportunity to take part in our traineeship programme where we have placed young people on films such as Star Wars, Black Widow and Bond. This opportunity means the world to all the trainees. I wouldn't have got this opportunity if it wasn't for the BFI. Because of the BFI Film Academy, I feel like my voice matters. Without the BFI Film Academy, I would not be in the film industry at all. So thank you to the Film Academy. <laughs>
Um, and I really enjoyed it, to be honest, because I, I, I knew I wanted to be a filmmaker, but I felt like I didn't have the resources. And I also felt like I haven't made a film before and I'm not around people who share the same interests. So it, it felt out of reach. But I guess um, as a 16, 17 year old, making a film with a bunch of people, submitting it for film festivals, kind of reignited, OK, it's possible. Um, do you want to hear more about how the VFI helped me or shall I leave it at the Academy there? Let's have a bit more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I did that and I wanted off to go and uh, work at a cinema, took a gap year. Um, and then I was going to jump into college to study visual effects. Um, and then I saw the opportunity of um, working on a feature film. They didn't say which one. So I applied and thought, okay, that's often to the abyss. And somehow find my, found myself doing like a few interviews. Next thing you know, I'm packing my bags and I'm moving to London to work on the uh, the Star Wars. So this was amazing for someone like me. I was like, oh my gosh, I felt like an imposter the whole way through. I was just like, is this really happening? What's going on? But um, it was an amazing experience. Um, then from there, I went to work at the BFI itself as a film fund runner, learning about how the film fund works and um, how to get funding, meeting some amazing people. And that was amazing, valuable learning, all sorts, amazing. Um, and then now I'm working um, as a runner at Uncommon, um, which is slightly different path. So um, it's more ads, short form. We do feature too, but it's basically making anything that the client wants. So that's, um, you know, like a new thing to me since I'm used to film. Um, and then we'll be going on to work as a, an assistant producer for Grey, which is another ad agency. So I've taken a, a swift turn, but honestly, um, all of those opportunities, I most certainly wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for uh, VBFI. <laughs> Wicked. It's really cool to see that like trajectory from just getting involved with the initial course and then building up a like professional mm. kind of portfolio throughout that. Alex, what about you? What courses were you involved with? Um, so I did the Future Film Academy at the BFI South Bank. Um, so yeah, that was um, that was a similar like regional one. We did met every Wednesday and Saturday for. I think it was like three months so it was like the probably the longest commitment I'd had done as a teenager apart from school <laughs> so um so yeah that was just incredible you know like I think what I really enjoyed about it is is even though I was a student I felt very much like an equal to the people that were teaching me and and working with me and it was just felt like a really safe space to sort of grow and sort of move on from being a kid and sort of start figuring out what I want to do with the rest rest of my life um so um so yeah, I really enjoyed that aspect of it and sort of really kept in touch with all my tutors and all that afterwards. And I also did the NFTS craft skills residential, which is um, the one where you sort of, you stay in a, in a part of Beaconsfield for two weeks and you make a film together with people quite intensively. Um, so bo both of those were sort of great for building the crea my creative skills and stuff like that. But I think the most important thing I got from them was actually like how, large and the industry is you know how many different roles there are you know like from carpenters to like a food stylist like I didn't know there was someone that was you know styled food <laughs> you know all those kind of like very it was like a small slew of food stylists coming through after yeah. this now. <laughs> yeah there's just going to be like an influx of, um, of food stylists google it it's a very cool job but um you know just things like that really niche things it sort of opened my eyes to like just how kind of amazing the industry is it is more than because as a kid you sort of grow up and you just think of the actors because that's what you see on screen and obviously so much work goes in behind that um and uh so yeah so then I just sort of started jumping between lots of different roles I kind of wanted to experience all of it um and then I started specializing in camera um and then the same as Angel I managed to get onto future skills and the behind the scenes team and sort of progressed from there Amazing. You actually, by talking about all the different roles, you've segued us really nicely into this next little bit, which is as well as supporting, I don't know, seamless, it was like it was intentional. Um, so as well as supporting filmmakers, the Film Academy also, also rather offers uh, programmes that deal with other aspects of film, other roles at the other end of things, so festivals and events and things like that. So Milia, hello. Um, it would be lovely if you could tell us a little bit about what the Young Programmers Scheme is and what that involves. Yeah, of course. So, um, you know, it was something that really stood out to me. I finished university and knew I didn't necessarily want to go into practical filmmaking, but I knew I loved the culture of film, but didn't really know where to begin. 
Um, and after I was lucky enough to work as events assistant for the first time on London Film Festival in 2019, and through the connections I made on that, I came across the opportunity to apply to be a BFI Film Academy Young Programmer. And I thought, okay, you know, this takes what I love about film. It takes that sort of like community aspect of it. It takes that sort of critical lens that you need um, to either write or, you know, talk about film. And kind of put it all together in this one role. So I went for it and it turned out to be, you know, the thing that sort of guided me into the path that I'm on now and like really helped me focus on what I want to do because there are so many different pathways that you can go down when it comes to the industry and this really helped me focus on you know the specific one that I wanted to do so it was a really good opportunity for me to build my confidence in um, you know communication um, looking at films in a certain way thinking okay what makes a good film to program what makes a good event what what gets people talking um, and I think that's one of the main things that that being a young programmer really really helped me um, you know, kind of get together. Weird. Yeah, and I think programming as well is something that people don't, it's one of those roles that people don't really know exist, or, or I certainly didn't as well. Like exactly, that, me too, like, me too. were a thing, but I didn't know how they kind of happened. There were people who were putting together these strands and things like that. Can you just tell us a little bit more about how the Young Programmers Scheme has um, sort of fed into your work now, how it's, how it's developed you as a programmer? <laughs> yeah, so I, I guess... You know it really gave me the skills like I said to to look at a film and think okay what about this is going to get people talking what what's going to interest people it's given me the opportunity to have confidence in like my own voice and my own opinion of something I think um, and to think of that as like valid um, so you know from this I've been able to get programming um, work at other film festivals so I'm a junior programmer on another film festival um, it's really helped me to figure out exactly what I think I can do with the power of programming because I think there is a lot of power in programming there's a lot of responsibility um, and it really like shone a light on exactly like you know who I can kind of speak to through through these programming opportunities. Amazing um, I'm just conscious of time as well. We've got such a short time for this little bit, so I'm going to zoom through some things very quickly. But both Alex and Angel, you touched slightly on the Future Skills Trainee Programme uh, and working, I think, did you both work on Star Wars? Yes? Yeah, you both yeah. did the Star Wars. Amazing. Yeah. The, the Star Wars, oh, as it is known yeah. to fans <laughs> everywhere. Um, so Future Skills, you need to be an alumnus, alumni of a previous Film Academy course. Can you just tell us very quickly about what, future skills is and um, what you got up to the role specific that you had um oh, sorry <laughs> um you want to get so, you go yeah, yeah okay <laughs> um i was a script assistant trainee script supervisor assistant trainee um so i was shadowing both the uh script supervisors on first and um second unit which basically means you're in charge of the continuity on set but also making sure that um, script revisions are updated so you work closely with the writer and the director kind of sit in the middle of the set and you're the eyes of the the piece whilst everything goes on um, so that was amazing because I expressed that I was interested in script writing and um, I went for an AD position but they felt like I'd be best fit for a script supervisor assistant and I think that that was the perfect role for me but it also showed how they were listening to everything that I said, like my hobbies and interests. I knew I wasn't going to be writing Star Wars, but I thought, let me just tell them I'm into writing. Um, and they remembered and put me in that role. So it was amazing. And there was other people who were camera trainee assistants, um, people in props. It was just amazing how we all had these interests and we could shadow people in industry. And even to this day, I'm still um, in touch with my managers who are like script supervising the biggest films ever. So it's um, something you should get involved in. You've got to be an alumni. Amazing. Alex? Yeah, so I, I was the behind the scenes trainee, um, also known as EPK, which is electronic press kit. So they create all the marketing materials for a movie. So making of documentaries, like motion posters, all that kind of stuff. Um, 
and I applied to it so it was one that you could apply to and I remember seeing it as like behind the scenes trainee and I, I was trying to google what that meant and I was like does that just mean like not an actor like because everything's behind the scenes <laughs> and, um, uh, but then I you know when I sort of applied to it I realized it was sort of the perfect role for me because I love documentary and um uh, but obviously I'd love to work on a huge movie as well so it sort of intertwined both and it was a role that I never knew existed you know I thought probably like behind the scenes was just like the director's friend on his phone or, you know like filming him behind the monitor or something um but no there's these whole huge like seven person teams behind making all this content and stuff so um so that was like an incredible thing to go in so I went in and I was a trainee but I got to, sh to they let me shoot on cameras so I was on the the second unit shooting behind the scenes of it all and um, I was B camera on all the interviews so um it really sort of trained me to go in and and then like a couple of movies later I've met that it was then like the main camera operator for behind the scenes on most of the stuff that I do now so I shoot all the interviews and all that kind of stuff so it sort of helped it really trained me and progressed me a lot quicker than I was ever expecting to do this. That sounds fantastic. Oh, future skills, get in. <laughs> so, I mean, it's also worth saying that it's not just courses and programmes. There are other ways that the Film Academy develops people's skills through, for example, there are labs events, which are monthly Zoom meetings with industry professionals that are designed to build on your practical skills. There might be a session that's specifically focused on like the business of film or something that is more script writing focused. There are also Film Academy scene events, which are Instagram live interviews with our young programmers and emerging filmmakers. Uh, Lilia, can you just tell us a little bit more about scene and what you've kind of taken from that experience? Yeah, of course. I think scene was probably one of my favourite aspects of being a young programmer. Um, it really helps you to kind of get involved with the people that, are, you know, are making these amazing things around you, networking, um, you know, Every week we would speak to a different uh, young up and coming filmmaker and discuss their work, discuss what kind of led them to create that piece of work and you know advice that they had to anyone watching. And it was just a really great opportunity to build your network, um, build your kind of communication and confidence skills, seeing something through from the beginning to the end. So, you know, you would kind of pre-plan this this interview with someone you, you do all like the tests and everything and then you, you would do the interview itself and it kind of it really helped you see like the whole process of something um which I think in in terms of programming was really useful because it's not just a case of thinking oh that film's good I'll I, I want to show that there you know there's so much that goes on behind certain events and stuff that seemed like really gave you a taste of you know what it meant to see something through from beginning to end and see that through successfully amazing oh cool <laughs> i'm just yeah. it's just lovely to hear about all this stuff <laughs> i'm just kind of going cool because it is um i'm very aware that we have i want to leave minutes for um some audience questions so i'm going to finish with one last question to you all and if you could do it in one sentence that would be amazing that would be a dream but if there are any young people, young filmmakers, young programmers watching this who aren't quite sure whether or not to get involved in the Film Academy yet, what would you say to them? Let's start with Angel. Um, I'd say just do it anyway. Just do it. Because honestly, you never know where it'll take you. And when you, um, you said one sentence and sorry, I'm waffling. <laughs> <laughs> it can be a very long sentence. It's fine. But There's yeah, like semicolons and stuff. Um, where it'll take you because even now um, I was put um, through for like a um, BAFTA scholar bursary thing. And now I've got a camera. This is again through the BFI um, and all of the opportunities I've had to work on a film and work with the BFI themselves. You never know. So just take that, plung that plunge even if you're nervous. Cool. Alex? Um, yeah, I would just say that at the moment, from what I've been seeing on film sets, like the industry is just desperate for people to work. Like it's the perfect time to do it. Like all, all the shows are coming over, you know, like it's, you know, and the, and the Film Academy sets you up so perfectly for it. You know, it's a short course. It's not a, a three year commitment of a degree or anything like that. You can go there and you can get everything you need and and go straight onto a set with like some confidence of what you're going to do so um so yeah it's like the perfect time to just have a go at it and um give it a try amazing and Lilia yeah I mean just echoing what everyone else has said you really can't lose with the film academy I think 
whatever area you go into, you're going to gain knowledge and skills that you can transfer across to something else and they're going to stick with you for, you know, your whole career. Wicked. Oh, cool. And we have time for a few audience questions. So I'm going on to my other little document. Okay. Caitlin Meir asks, how did you prepare for the academy? I'm going to put this on to Angel. Hmm. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't prepare. Um, I just expressed my interest. And I think that shone through um, my application for like the first um, BFI Film Academy thing that I did. Um, and so I think that's one of the beauties is they're not expecting you to have like made films before. They want people who show passion and are interested. Um, and then things will fall into place. The opportunities will come. So, uh, yeah. I yeah, it's prepared. kind of like not about like <laughs> you're they're there to learn aren't you so it's yeah, kind of exactly, like if you show exactly. up and you know everything already there's no point in being there really um amazing fiona arnold is asking i am a careers advisor and would be really interested to know if these courses support people to develop a career as an alternative to uni it sounds like it but did any of you go to uni wish i was under 25 i am sorry fiona um i think alex you talked a little bit about this leaving school early and this was this an alternative to uni did you go to uni in the end Oh yes, no, this was an alternative for uni for me, for sure. I mean, I had like no qualifications. My, I was not, I did not set myself up well in life <laughs> before, before going um, to Film Academy, but um, Film Academy just sort of gave me everything that I needed to feel like I could, you know, even Silver Arts Award that it gives you, it doesn't, or, or whatever, the courses give different awards and stuff, but um, even that just on a CV just sort of looks like something. It looks like you've done something. Um, sometimes it has equal weight as a degree in some ways because um, they just want to know that you've sort of got, and sometimes if they don't understand the qualification, that's better. You know, like people are flagging through CV so quickly, they might think it's a degree, not quite, but you know, it's that kind of thing. Is it just, it gives you something that you feel like you've achieved something you can put it on a CV and you've also most importantly got the skills from it more than any kind of qualification. Um, and I think what is so good about film academy is that because it is short and um the tutors that come in tend to be working within the industry you know they they find time within their their schedules to come and do like a week or something like that so they're very active and they're very in the know about um what's going on at this very point um and I think that's what's great as well so I feel, I feel like a lot of people kind of come in and do academy maybe and, and decide not to go for a degree afterwards and I want to get um, Lilia on this as well, because it's from a slightly different angle, I guess, programming criticism versus filmmaking. Did you find, how did this set you up as opposed to how maybe a degree might have, or if, or if you did a degree, how those two things sat alongside each other? Yeah, so I, I did a degree, I did a film and literature degree, but it wasn't like practical filmmaking, it was all kind of like analytical and theoretical. Um, and as much as I loved it, and it did benefit me in, in many ways, I think coming out of it and moving into my career, it didn't necessarily give me that head start that it could have. Um, you know, I like I said, I felt a little bit directionless. I'm, I wasn't quite sure exactly where I could go with my degree. Um, whereas I feel like with BFI Film Academy, you know, it gave me those practical like skills to move forward. It gave me kind of like a sense of direction. It gave me, you know, an idea of what I could do um, in the industry rather than, you know just write an essay about a film you know it, it felt a little bit more practical but not practical filmmaking if that makes sense totally makes sense uh, I think we've got time for one more question so uh, Rose Morgan Mails asks uh, as these courses especially residentials are very competitive what's the best way to demonstrate your love or interest in film I'm going to open that out to whoever wants to take it I mean, something that I did, um, it took me a year after graduation to really kind of get started in the industry. But what I did in that time was I moved back to my, my hometown, my small hometown, but I looked for any opportunity available to try and still, you know, get myself situated in the film. And that was signing up to my local film club, um, which showed like monthly screenings around the town. Um, which was all 95% old people, you know, it's not necessarily like where I wanted to be, but I was like, okay, this is going to give me some experience. This is going to, you know, keep my brain engaged in the industry that I want to be in. And it's there. So I'm going to take that opportunity. So I think, you know, even if an opportunity seems really small, I think it looks really good if people can see that you've really gone for it, like that it's very evident of your passion. 
Angel, Alex, anything to add? Any final words? Um, I'd probably say even just making things. Um, even though I didn't have a camera, um, I'd make things with my phone or I would borrow someone else's, just get into that habit of um, testing out those skills. And even if, it, if you feel like it doesn't look good, again, it will show that you have the passion and the time to actually do it um, on your own. Um, and I'd also say like um, that uh, I've, I've tutored on one of the film academies now and, and now seeing the sort of application process and everything. Um, if you keep applying, even if you don't get in and if you keep applying, we do remember and we can see that you've progressed and you've added more things. So just keep applying, even if you haven't got in, you've still got years left to apply, then just keep going. <laughs> keep applying be passionate, get involved in whatever you can. So I'm afraid that is all we have time for from our panel. But if you want more information on any of the opportunities discussed today, you can drop us an email, you can contact us on social media, or you can check out our website. I believe there is also a very lovely Film Academy newsletter, which you can sign up to. Uh, I think the details of all of those are now going to be in the chat. And we're going to move on to part two of the event. So you will be able to join a breakout room with our partners across the UK to find out more about opportunities that are local to you. Uh, you should have received a Zoom link when you signed up, which you can use to access the session that's relevant to your area. Uh, these are also now being posted in the chat and I think they'll be on the screen shortly. But all that remains is to say thank you very much to our panellists and thank you all for listening. Thank you, Billy. And thank you to all the panel here today that just joined us on that wonderful conversation. We are now going to split into different breakout sessions depending on where you are in the UK and we'll be putting some information in the chat box of which ones you can join. If you are watching this back on YouTube, of course, these sessions were only open on the day of the festival, but we will be putting all of their websites in the description of the YouTube box below so that you can find out what opportunities and training there are available local to you in your area. I hope you enjoyed today's session and I hope you enjoy the rest of the festival.